Welcome everybody to morning coffee and Photoshop tips. My name is Mac Laskowski. As you can see by this really cool little thing that I'm just, I'm so excited about because I can do it live and I can like send it in anytime I want. Ready? Ready? Look at that. <laughs> you can see the website and everything. Uh, you can find me if we haven't met before or online or virtually or in person. Uh, my name is Matt. You can find me over at mattk.com. Um, you can see all my tutorials and courses and presets and um, a, um, uh, I'm a Sony artisan of imagery, which is their ambassador program. So you can see my gear if you got any questions about that stuff and portfolios and all that fun stuff. All right. Does everybody have their coffee ready? What are you drinking this morning? What's what's your coffee of choice this morning? I, I actually should really get going. I, I, I usually go for 20, 25 to 30 minutes. I have pretty much a hard stop in about 15 to 20 minutes because I got something else right after this. So uh, I, I, I shouldn't really talk too much about coffee, but interested to see what everybody drinks in the morning. And I know for some of you, it's not even morning time. It's it's later on. So uh, quick hello to everybody. We got Roger, PJ, I can't even, lots of people in here. I can't go through all the names, but thank you for saying good morning here. We got Johnny Flash. Johnny Flash says elbow bump. No elbow bump. I do fist bump still. I, I, I shake hands, but we can do an elbow bump if you want to. Um, let me get that little thing. Oh, that's the bad part about these little overlays is that they don't go away unless I make them go away. So there we go. That's gone as well. Leon made it back. Leon, this is two in a row f with you. So good job, man. I did one yesterday on Facebook. Today I'm doing one here on YouTube. And um, oh man, Starbucks, Cafe Verona, Death Wish, Death Wish Coffee. Wow. Okay. All right, let's get in. So here's what we're going to do today. Uh, I got a photo. I actually edited this whole photo on my Facebook page live yesterday um, from start to finish. And today I'm going to do something a little bit different with it. Uh, the sky is one of the brightest parts in this photo. I'm going to show you three different ways in Photoshop that you can adjust the sky. None of them being right or wrong because the moment you step into Photoshop, get out of your mind that there is a right or wrong way to do something. There's just 35 different ways. Today, I'm gonna to show you three of them. And uh, and at that, you can put them into your little repertoire of tricks. You can pick which one you want. Maybe you settle on one that you like more than the other one, okay? All right, let me go, uh, let me switch, get my screen going with you guys. And so here is the, uh, here's the photo we're gonna work on. I'll very quickly show you what could have been done in Lightroom or Camera Raw. Um, as far as, uh, as far as starting this photo. So the photo started a little bit dark. You can see the foreground's really dark in this. Uh, I won't go through the whole story for me and for my shooting. Um, I, I bracket when I'm shooting into the sun, which this was, and what, cause I don't want to worry about the technicals in the camera. I bracket and that way I don't have to worry about it. But the other thing when I'm shooting water, I bracket, I'm an aperture priority mode I'm for 99.9% for .9 of my landscapes. And so what the bracketing does is it changes shutter speed to give me different exposures. And that gives me different choices of water. This out of the series happened to be my favorite choice of the water. Um, it had just lots of nice little detail in here. The other water I thought was either too choppy or too smooth. And, uh, and this gave me the nicest and I shoot I shoot with Sony, which has a tremendous amount of dynamic range, which means I don't have to do exposure blending or HDR because I'm not going to have any noise in here uh, to open that up. So if you're, you know, depending on your camera and how it handles shadows, you might have to do some exposure blending. But anyway, this was essentially where I got the photo and I realized I wanted to do something special with the sky. So I brought it over into Photoshop. Okay. I'm going to remember, I'm going to do three ways here. So version number one, we will go over into the channels palette here. Okay. And I'm going to command or control click on the RGB channel. So this is technically called a luminosity mask, what we're doing here. Uh, but it doesn't really matter. In fact, everything we're about to do is really technically a luminosity mask, but this is, this is what people refer to as luminosity masking. So I command or control click on this RGB channel. You can see it puts a little marching ants uh, selection around everything here. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hold down a keyboard shortcut, which is known as the claw. Um, command, option, shift on Mac, control, alt, shift on PC. So command, option, shift on Mac, 
control alt shift on PC. And you'll notice if you look at my cursor down in the bottom right hand corner, it's like a little arrow, a little hand, and it's got an X in it. Okay. So what that's going to do is if I click on RGB again, it refined that selection one level less of one level of, I don't even know the word for it, of a deeper luminosity. So the last selection was pretty broad. Um, it was about 50% of the luminance values were selected. This refined it even more, right? And I'm going to click it one more time and that refined it even more. So now what I have is really just the extreme brightness, but that little edge of selection, that's the, the beauty of luminosity masks is they're feathered. You can't tell they're feathered because Photoshop can't really show you in marching ants a feathered selection, but it is feathered. Okay. So now what I'll do is I'll go back over to my layers panel, come up here to adjustments, go down. I use a mix of brightness and contrast or curves. Um, you could use either one. There, again, there, there's no right answer to this. So I'll, I'll try, uh, I'll, I'll use, I'll use brightness contrast for this. Okay. And we'll take the brightness and start bringing that down. Okay. We don't want to go too far. It starts getting a little bit weird, but I'll start bringing that down. I can even go in here and add a little bit of contrast to it. So if I turn that layer off and then back on, you can see not all areas, and this is the beauty of a, a luminance mask like we built here, not all areas need to get reduced. Okay. I just need those bright areas to get reduced because you have to realize the camera does not see tones and highlights and shadows the way we see highlights and shadows. So I don't need to bring the whole sky dark. I don't need to take these clouds and make them black in order to get this the way I want. And that's really one of the nice things about a luminosity mask is it gives you a nice feathered tonal change to your photo. Okay. Um, I, luminosity masking in and of itself is a, is a, is a huge topic. We could spend hours on luminosity masking. This was the simplest of the simple examples here, but uh, I do have a course on the website at mattk.com. Um, if you uh, just click on courses, if you want to, uh, to find out more about luminosity masking, if it's something that interests you. Okay. So that's one way go ahead and uh, hide that layer. Let's go back to our background. So another way to tackle this sky would be to come up here to the select menu. And I actually like this way a little bit better. Come up here to the select menu, go down here to color range. Okay. And again, you got to make sure, make sure you click on the layer you want here. Don't, don't click on another layer. So select color range and we'll come up in here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose select highlights. And then what you get here is two different adjustments. Okay. So let's, Let's bring this one, let's crank this one up here. Okay. So the fuzziness adjustment and the best way to learn what these adjustments do folks is, is move around. Okay. Move around the adjustments, it, it, you know, test the extremes, bring it all the way down to zero, crank it all the way up to hundred percent. Test the extremes is really always the best way to learn it. But, um, what's white is what will be selected. That's how you think of this. Okay. So whatever you see in white here is what'll be selected. So as I move through here, you can see, and what's gray will be partially selected. All right. And what's black won't be selected at all. So you can see here that gives me a pretty good range there. And then the range is basically saying, if I bring it all the way over to zero, which is black, it's saying, Hey, select everything. Everything's white, but I start reducing this range and I start controlling the range of tones to just the highlights as I get closer to 255 here. The closer I get to 255, the closer I am to just the highlights. The more I go, I'm saying, hey, bring the blacks in too. Think of this as a gradient from black to white. So the closer I get to 255, the more I'm restricting this to just the highlights. So again, there's no right answer to this, guys. This is more of an eyeballing thing. I know I don't want to really make this darker up here because it's already dark. I know the bulk of what I want is in here. So that to me looks like a good selection. I'll click. Okay. Again, you see a couple little marching ants up here and then we'll do the same thing. We'll come up to adjustments. We will go to brightness and contrast and we'll start to bring that brightness down <clears throat> like so. And then again, we can even add some contrast to it. 
All right, you can of course do other adjustments that you want using the adjustments panel. I'm trying to keep this pretty restricted to just working on the sky there, but you get the idea. Okay, so I have total control over that sky area. All right, and in a nice blended way, which blends nicely with the trees and the hillside. So that's another version. And then from here, I'll show you one more version here. And then, uh, oh, by the way, let's uh, very quickly, because uh, I know a bunch of people just joined. Um, if you guys would do me a humongous favor, number one, thank you for being here. Number two, uh, if you would, number make sure you're subscribed to my channel. Um, and then if you could share this, I, I'd really appreciate it. There's a little share button on there. It'll give you a link. If you're on Facebook, you can post it to Facebook too, if you're in a photography group or something like that. So uh, it just helps me get the word out and I would uh, I'd really appreciate your help in doing that. So um, I can only reach so many people when I do a live session online, you guys can, can help it grow, okay? All right, let's jump back in here. So the last way is not quite as refined, but it actually, can work really well. I, I don't necessarily think it's a, a, a bad way to do things, and I think you should try all three, uh, is come up here to select and go down to sky, okay? So in October of 2020, Adobe re released sky replacement, and in releasing sky replacement, they actually put their sky selection technology in the select menu. So if you don't wanna do a full sky replacement, but you just want to work on the sky, you can just do select sky, and it'll do a nice job of going in there and uh, you know keeping the trees and everything intact. And then just like before, we come over there and we go over to adjustments. I'll do brightness and contrast. And then we bring that brightness down a bit. Okay, that's going to leave you with probably a little bit of a harsher transition between sky and foreground because um, you can even look at the mask over here and you can see how harsh that transition is. But remember, in all of these examples, okay? So, and again, we're, you know, we went into the sky. I'll, I'm gonna undo one second. I'm just gonna show you one alternative way to do it once you have a selection is go to your adjustments panel and you can do curves too. Curves, curves sometimes gives me a little bit more of a realistic result. Just drag that curve down. All right, and it also lets me, you know, pull the highlights down specifically if I wanted to. So curves is not a, a bad way to go either. Again, there's no right way. You have to, you have to experiment with them and, and see what one fits for you. And it could be a combination of all of them as well. So, so the one thing I'll show you here is let's go turn on one of the ones we did earlier. So in fact, we'll use, let's use this one, okay? So, if you look at our mask and I can hold down the option or alt key and click on the layer mask to see it, you'll see it's bringing in, remember, because I, I talked about these selections being feathered in different ways. So it's bringing in, you can see what's white is what's selected. It's bringing in lots of different ways to select. So, but what's white in here is, is what's selected. So you can always take your brush, press B for brush, and you can set your foreground color to black or white and you can add and subtract from this area. So again, I will option or alt click and bring this back and you can go in here. And that's probably a little bit too strong. So I'm gonna pull that back there. But you can go in here and you can take your brush and paint on that layer mask and either add or subtract from it. Okay, so I painted with black. So I'm essentially hiding those areas. If I paint with white on that layer mask, I'm basically bringing in the darkening that I did with that adjustment layer. You can look over here on the layer mask to, uh, to see it there. So again, you have to understand a little bit about layer masking to, to get that to work, but sometimes I will paint with a low opacity brush and I'll paint right along the horizon line and I'll blend that a little bit so there's not that stark contrast between your foreground and your sky inside of there. Okay, um, so I'll take a couple minutes for questions here. And as I mentioned earlier, I have something right after this at 1030. So I'm gonna have to uh, cut this one a little bit short this week. But if you got any questions, I'll take a quick through, look through your comments inside of there. But uh, again, three different ways uh, to do, to work on brighter parts of your photo. It doesn't have to be a sky. Uh, it could be anything that's bright. Uh, and then to quickly review version number one, 
we did basically a luminosity mask using the RGB channel. Version number two, we went to select uh, down here to color range. And then version number three, we went down here to select sky. So again, a couple of different ways to, uh, to get to that same point inside of there and give them both or give all three of them a try and see what you come up with. All right, so uh, let me take a quick look through our comments here, see if we've got any questions. Um, Roy says, for fun, what would you like to see in the next upgrade of Lightroom? Roy, that's a really good question. What would I like to see in the next upgrade of Lightroom? I would like to see, you know what? I like to see, I'd like to see something close to, I'd, I'd like to see some type of object selection technology. So I know a lot of people say layers and, and things like that. I, I don't think that's ever going to happen. I could be wrong, but I, I don't think you're ever going to see layers in Lightroom. And frankly, I don't want to, because as soon as you add layers, you then have to add 25 new features to make layers work. And now Lightroom becomes this very manageable program and it grows to this behemoth that Photoshop is. So I would like Lightroom. I think, I think at its core, Lightroom is a fairly simple, not deep program. And I'd like it to stay that way. I would like to see some object selection technology um, where it detected skies, where it could detect foregrounds and um, you know, blur, you know, Photoshop's got it. Photoshop's got, it. if you go under the select menu, uh, you can select by focal, uh, what's it called? Let me see here real quick. I forget exactly, select, um, select focus area. So to select by focus area, and I know Lightroom's already got some, some things like that in the back, and I, I'd like to see some of that brought forward a little bit. So I'd like to see adjustment, you know, when we can do a brush or a gradient on something, I'd like, rather than just range masking, I'd like to see a little bit more targeted masking in there. So I think that would be cool. And then I'm not a big fan. Capture One's a great program. Capture One's a very, very good raw editor. It's the only raw editor I will put on par with Lightroom. Um, so I think Capture One's a great, I think Capture One is made for pros. Capture One is made for people that are doing magazine covers and things like that. It's a very, very, it, it's a very difficult interface to understand. But if you get it, it's a good program. Um, so, the one thing that I really like from Capture One is the way that they handle adjustment layers. Lightroom handles adjustment selection, like when you do a gradient or a brush, um, Lightroom handles it with these little dots on the screen and it can get confusing sometimes to see which one uh, you're gonna be working with. I would like to see uh, more of a, a stacked thing kind of, and on one does it that way, like similar to Capture One as well. When you add an adjustment, it adds a little uh, stacking thing and uh, it's not a layer it's just it's just an easier way to select your uh, local adjustment so I'd like to see that improved a little bit as well um, Dick says Lightroom needs to be rewritten for better performance that's what Lightroom Cloud is Dick you're not going to get Lightroom Classic rewritten for better performance Lightroom Classic is what it is and Adobe has shown their commitment to keep updating it in my opinion um, they've added some wonderful features and performance over the last five years since it went subscription <laughs> but that's my alarm too that I got to get off of here. Um, but you're not going to see it get rewritten. It is, it is what it is. And they created the other version of Lightroom because that was basically the rewrite. Are we there yet? Are people ready to switch it? No, but I think in a few years you're going to want to, and it's, it's faster. It's easier. It's a better interface. You're automatically backed up in the cloud. So, um, I think you'll, uh, I think you'll want uh, to do that one. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> Johnny says, let's stay on topic, kids. That's my choice, Johnny. Um, let's see here. Uh, Ron's got a question. Ron, that's, that's, you can probably Google that question, so I'm not gonna take it here. Uh, Ron's, another Ron says, how about select and mask to feather the mask and refine it? Absolutely, you can, when I did my selections of the, the mask, you can refine that mask any way that you want or know how, again, there's no right answer. There's a thousand different ways to adjust a mask in Lightroom. None of them are right. They're all just a different way to do something. So yeah, absolutely. If you want to use the select and feather. PJ says TIFF versus PNG file format. TIFF is made for images. PNG is made for web. So um, transparent web graphics, I should say, not necessarily photos. So you would never save a photo in a PNG format. You would save a logo, 
graphic designs, those types of things, text elements that you would put on the web. TIFF is made for uh, more of an image uh, fo you know, photography type of a format. So, but man, Roy, that's such a good question. Thank you, Roy, for, for giving that one. Um, all right, guys, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to bail out. I'm sorry, I'm not gonna be able to answer all the questions. Uh, if you want to, this live session will be converted over to a video on my YouTube page. Um, so you can stop by there and I can jump in and try to type in a, a couple of quick answers uh, after that one. So thank you so much, guys. I, uh, I hope you enjoyed our little morning coffee and Photoshop tips. Um, and uh, I hope you guys all have a uh, great rest of your day. Swing by mattk.com, click on events, and you can always see what live events and things that I have planned. So I've been doing these every Tuesday-ish pretty much. So uh, feel free to swing by the website. I believe I will be able to do it again next Tuesday morning. So hopefully I'll see you then. Take care, guys.